a filmmaker from Brooklyn, New York. His work spans every continent and has been featured on television and in print, Discovery, Nat Geo, Vice and others. He recently returned from Mogadishu, the most dangerous city on earth, where he shadowed the heroic El Mahmud women on their quest to clean up the streets and restore humanity to their war-torn country. I present to you Sam Hyde, 2070 Paradigm Shift. Sam. I have this water here. Is this anybody's? I'm claiming that right there. All right. Uh, uh. Got some notes here. Did I just drop the mic pack? Oh, good. Okay. I keep that on me. I don't know if you guys can't hear me. Give me like 25 seconds here. Give me like 10 more seconds. Oh, oh man, this thing. Can we turn this up a little bit so I'm not, I don't have to like turn my head into it? Can you like, how about now? Test, test, hey, there you go. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. You're doing a good job. Oh man, okay. Can we reset the clock so I have another minute extra, please? Thank you, there we go, okay, hey. I wanted to start sitting down anyway. Um, guys, pat yourselves on the back right now, okay? Let's do it. Come on. Everybody. I'm not going to make you, I'm not going to let you stop until I see everybody doing it. Let's pat ourselves on the back. There we go. You two, you're patting each other. That's cheating. Uh, you, you couldn't keep your hands off her, could you? Yeah. Hey, I don't blame you. She is beauty. Hey, guys. That pat on the back right there is for saving the worlds. Okay, worlds, world. I'm looking at young minds right now. You guys are all intelligent. I know that you did good in school. I didn't do that. You especially. You're very smart. <clears throat> Look at us. We're the machine that keeps the world going. Okay? I'd like to start this talk off with a parable, a story, if you will. I was at a college a second tier, not an Ivy League school, a second choice school. And I was in a class, and there was a student in that class, okay? And this, the teacher, he was spouting some horrible nonsense about how it was something about how women's rights are not legitimate, something that everybody knew was false. But if anybody had spoken up, he would have taken extreme joy in failing them, okay? Nobody spoke up. One person raised his voice. One person started talking. The teacher couldn't believe it. The classroom couldn't believe it either. But in the end, he had logic on his side. And at the end of the day, he proved this point. That student was Albert Einstein. <clears throat> and that same sense of And that same sense of childlike play and innocence that we know from Albert Einstein, I can sense it in this room today. TEDx, Drexel University, Drexel, Drexel University, next X. So you gotta be thinking to yourselves right now, who's this 22 year old kid up on stage with a chip on his shoulder and his heart on his sleeve and the world in his eyes? Well. That's a tough question, asking somebody to define who they are. I much prefer to ask, what inspires that person? What inspires you? What inspires you? What inspires you? I want an answer, what inspires you? You better find something, man. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> Possibilities. Um, what inspires me? is teaching African refugees how to program JavaScript. What inspires me is finding out how to use maglev trains to get resources to the moon. These are the challenges of tom that tomorrow's gonna face, okay? How are we gonna get clean drinking water to two billion Chinese people? You got an answer? 
Get inspired. I'm going to be picking on you. The second thing that inspires me are ideas. Ideas are amazing. Ideas are like currency. Ideas are what drives the world. Ideas are what we need to get to the next stage. And not just great inventions like the train, little things like this microphone that enables me to speak to the unwashed masses. TED Talks. <laughs> TED Talks are another great idea. Where would, where, where would we be right now? And we have to talk about it because great ideas don't come in all shapes and sizes. 9-11, September 11th. And we're going to use some reverence here and not be silly about this, but look at what they accomplished with no weapons and just 11 guys who didn't even speak English. And that proves that sometimes great ideas are actually horrible ideas. So, I'm Sam Hyde. I'm an important thinker. I'm a creator, innovator, artist, idea. But above all else, I'm a passionate, childlike innovator. I've been all around the globe. 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 I've been all around the globe working on cutting edge projects of all kinds. And I'm here to ask you one question. Where are we at? Where are we? We've got all this great technology. We've got 7 billion people in the world. And according to UN projections, it's going to go up to 50 billion people. That's a lot of mouths to feed. And I don't think they're going to be able to feed themselves. So we better start coming up with some robots to bridge that gap. <clears throat> the West's sick addiction to fossil fuel is going to make this planet uninhabitable for the future generations. Uh, you'll know what I'm talking about if you've seen the movie An Inconvenient Truth. It's essentially what's going on is we're too selfish and we're driving our cars too much. And that's getting nature out of the picture. Now we looked at the data. We looked at the data. And what we found surprised us. What we found, right there, what we found was that culture is a sewer. We've got lewd media. We've got nasty bedroom things on TV. And they're sexualizing young girls, and it's getting to the point where even I have a problem with it. And that sh it shouldn't be that way. Folks, we're all world citizens. We're all world citizens. Is there not? There we go. We're all world citizens living together with one social contract, one economic future. We're all tied together. There's no more individual anymore. It's just the hive. So we have to stick together. We have to stick together and learn how to share. We have to learn how to share. Now, studies show that we work hard. It's true. Everybody in this room is a hard worker. You're a hard worker. You're a hard worker. You're a hard worker. I know because you're here. Okay? But studies show that we don't play hard enough. We got to play harder. <clears throat> it's because it's that sense of childlike playing uh, that's going to save us in the end. Albert Einstein. But hunger, poverty. Okay, we're on this right now. Can you control the slides? Get on the right slide. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. It's fine. There we go. Trash economy. Go back. Go back. Okay. I was in Rwanda. I was, a little, I was with a little startup you may have heard of. Tesla. Okay. Elon Musk was there. A team of innovators, artists, creators, ideas, thinkers. We were there, and we were giving iPads to this village of Africans, and it was so freaky because, uh, you know, they're so intuitive, you just doop, doop, swipe it, and it works. But these guys, we gave, we gave them like two-hour tutorials, and they couldn't figure out how to use the freaking things. The problem is us. This, uh, the people in this room right now, the solution is us. The problem is greedy corporations. Uh, we do things that matter. New York Times. I'll just skip ahead here. Um, all right. By my calculations, we have five years until the world ends. Unless we can start to reverse things like pollution and war. Pollution, war, these are big problems. Fix it now! Close your eyes. Everybody in this room, close your eyes. I'm not going to do anything weird or, or uh, you know, 
sensual with you. Close your eyes. We're going to change some minds right now. Everybody close your eyes. Okay, close them. Seal them up. Seal them up good. You, especially you. I want those eyes closed. Get on it. Make sure your friend has her eyes closed too. Now look, this is a pivotal moment, a pivotal moment in human history. Right now, in this room, Drexel University, TEDx, NextX, this is the time to be doing this. Take this moment in, breathe deeply, okay? Neurons are firing in your brain right now. You're more alert, you're astrally projecting. You're getting a little bit high on the sound of my voice. I have a nice timbre to it. I know that I'm a good public speaker. You're drinking bulletproof coffee and you don't even realize you're getting all jagged up in the head listening to my presentation. You're gonna remember this forever. 2070, future, now, what? What? 2070 predictions, the next 50 years are gonna be some serious stuff. Seafloor farming, 75% of the world's surface not being used by agriculture. On the seafloor, you're gonna have sea beets, sea yams, sea cabbage. Have you ever had a sea salad? Have you ever had sea cheesy baked potatoes that blew your socks off? Because you're gonna be. 2070 coming up. Trash economy, the abundance of trash. What are we gonna do with it? Are we gonna put it on an island? Are we gonna make it somebody else's problem? Or are we gonna take the initiative and take this problem by the horns? Trash economy, you use cubes of trash as money. Everybody becomes rich. It's a gold rush. Walk with me. Most of the major cities will be replaced with vast pleasure domes used exclusively by the Excelsiites, who are the neo-upper class, while the displaced hordes of lower class depth grovelers will live underground in tiered cities, endlessly toiling away for nuggets of neoplasmin. Video games are going to get more realistic. Super fuel efficient vehicles getting 80, 100 miles per gallon, it's not that crazy. You think I'm nuts right now because I'm suggesting something high tech like that? Flip side of that coin, gas, $10 a gallon. You can't win them all, but we can make do because we're going to have solar power also. Race riots. Extreme racial tension and unrest. Uh, it's called the knockout game, and eventually white people are going to get tired of playing it. That's all I'm saying. A new... I'll skip that one. Um, we got two minutes left? Okay. I'm playing games with me, huh? Can we get the original 18 minutes back on here? You caught me. I'm unprepared. Now, 2070, due to the massive birth increase, we're going to have a shortage of milk. What this means is the Neo-Earth Good Government League is going to have to genetically modify all humans, male and female, to lactate once a month. <laughs> once every month, you're going to be going to a lactation processing center where they'll, they'll hook you up to all kinds of weird things. Uh, now, due to some fluke, about 3% of the population produces milk uh, about 500% as much milk, so they're going to have to be farmed constantly, and it's very painful, but they're going to be rounded up by FEMA and their milk will serve the greater good. Guys, what's the one problem right now that's not going to be around in 2070? <laughs> the elderly and the disabled, because we're just going to kill them. We're just going to kill them. So we looked at the data. Uh, we got robots policing the streets. 2070, we got gay marriage. Surprise, surprise, bigots, okay? Sorry, in 2070, gay people are gonna be allowed to get married. Get used to it. Make me sick sometimes. Soda Stream will do for soda what 3D printing did for assault rifles. <laughs> And I think you're going to be seeing a whole lot more of these great Apple products. The iMac. You're probably thinking this is some pretty deep stuff, and you're right. State-enforced homosexuality. I don't have a problem with that. It's equal. Facebook as your birth certificate. Mac iPads built into every school desk for every child. 
3D printers are kids' toys, and the newest 3D printer, your kid is going to be printing up 3D Muslim Barbie dolls. 2070, gay men have actually developed reproductive organs inside of their area, and a new generation of children are born from inside gay men. Uh, what else we got here? Good luck searching for Al-Qaeda on the internet in 2070. You'd have better luck going next door and asking them in person. Uh, what else we got here? You are not going to like that one. Nobody's going to like that one. Let's do this here. Can we get one final pat on the back, everybody? Pat yourselves on the back. Please do it. You are going to be the future. That's a good thing. You're going places, kid. You're going, uh... Man, we're so screwed. 2070, Israel straight up ripped off the map. Bye! Bye bye! Bye! Not my choice. It's probably what's going to happen. Okay. Anybody else have any predictions? What do you think is going to happen? Now it's, now it's time for you, because you are, the, the you, you, plural, is the star, like YouTube here, like the Time Magazine cover. You guys are the star. I'm just some crazy guy. I'm not cool. What predictions do you have? 2070. Make a real one. Let's have something real here. You don't know that. I'm going to have your mind uploaded to my, uh, my uh, Blackberry. You'll be here. I'm going to, be, you'll be cryogenically frozen. I know it. What, anybody have any predictions? What do you think is going to happen in 2070? I think it's going to be better than what we have right now. I, I think there can't possibly be anything worse than what we have right now. Which implies it's going to be better. <laughs> hey, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. Thank what you. do you want me to walk through here? Right here. Okay.